Greetings, thanks to God. Once again, we welcome you into the cyber sanctuary of the Cedar Grove Church. We believe that you're here by divine providence and not by accident. We believe that the Spirit of the Lord has something significant that he wants to say and share to you on this Sunday. So we're grateful to God, grateful to God for this opportunity to share the Word of God. And I pray right now that the Word would lift, that it would strengthen, that it would encourage. Hallelujah. And that reminds us that we're not here to stay. But there is a better place that God has called us to. So we're grateful to God. Speaking of gratefulness, I want to thank God for our young people that have led us in worship today, our Joshua generation. Lord, we thank you for them. Yes, Lord, uh, my Bible tells me to train up a child in the way that it should go. And when it's old, it shall not depart. So we're grateful to God for them, even at such a young age, still using their time and their talent, sowing it into the kingdom of God. And I pray a 100-fold return for every good seed that they've sown. Pray God's blessings upon every parent and grandparent, everyone that has taken time out to sow and to help them become everything that God has called them to be. There is a word from heaven that I would love to share with you today. I want to call your attention to two separate passages of scripture. Don't want to defy the laws of homiletics and try to exegete two passages of scripture, but one is going to be my foundation and one is going to be my illustration. Amen. Uh, the illustration, just for your reference, will be coming from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. Luke 16, verses 19 through 31. And then my foundation will be coming from Revelation, the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 22, and verse number 12. And that's what I'd like to lift up in your hearing on this Sunday. Revelation 22 and 12. Hallelujah. And I'm concluding the sermon series called A Place Called Heaven. Uh, we've been talking about heaven in this season where we've been so familiar with, uh, so reminded of the fact that we're not here to stay always. Hallelujah. But I'm grateful to God that there is a place that's prepared for us over there where the wicked shall cease from troubling and over there where the weary are at rest. I'm grateful that God has prepared a place called heaven where we can forever be in the presence of our Lord. Hallelujah. And I thank him for that. So as we conclude that series, A Place Called Heaven, uh, tonight I want to speak from the subject, the reward of heaven. The reward of heaven. Amen. Let me lift up Revelation chapter 22, verse number 12. The word of God says this. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according to his works shall be. Amen. And again, we're ministering from the subject, uh, the reward of heaven. Let us pray. Precious Lord, we praise you. We thank you for this, this magnificent moment in time. We thank you for this day that you have made. And as always, Lord, we're making the choice to rejoice and, and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for all that you've put in place to provide such a time as this. And now, Lord, we pray that your word would go forth with power and authority, that every saint, every sinner, every soul that listens to this sermon will have an authentic encounter with you. I'm going to say thank you now because you're faithful. It's in the marvelous, matchless, and mighty name of Jesus, who is the Messiah. We ask it all. Somebody loves him. Shout amen. 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 The rewards of heaven. It's in John chapter 9, verse number 4, that Jesus says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. When the night comes, no man can work. Amen. Uh, Jesus was declaring that God recognizes rewards and, and requires, recognizes and rewards our works. Let me say that again. Uh, Jesus was saying here that God requires he recognizes and rewards our works. Amen. And I want to let you know tonight that as it looks, as we talk about this subject of the rewards of heaven, uh, this is I want to talk about the two important things as it relates to heavenly rewards. I want to talk about the importance of what we proclaim as well as the importance of what we practice. Amen. Uh, the importance of what we proclaim as well as the importance of what we practice. Uh, Jesus declared again, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, because the night cometh and no man can work. James put it this way in James 2 and 26. He said, for as the body without the spirit is dead, 
So faith without works is dead also. So in other words, it's important not only what we proclaim, that we proclaim and profess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, uh, but there is also some fruit. Amen. Somebody shout fruit. Yeah, the evidence that uh, that our pro proclamation has some authenticity. Amen. Uh, that God is not uh, looking at what we proclaim, but he's going to reward us based on our practices. Amen. Can I work my case tonight? Uh, our practices are important as it relates to our reward. As a matter of fact, Matthew 10 and 42 says it this way. And whosoever gives shall give a drink to one of my little ones, a cup of water, only in the name of a disciple. Verily I say unto you that you shall no wise lose your reward. Rewards are related to the works that we perform. As a matter of fact, Jesus put it this way in Re Revelation 22 and 12. He said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Hallelujah. And I will pay every man according, here it is, according to his works shall be. Amen. So our reward, uh, the payment, the reward that Jesus is talking about is related to the works that we do. Believe it or not, everybody's heavenly experience will not be the same. Amen. Amen. Uh, God is going to pay every man according to his works. Well, that's my foundation. Well, let me go further in our illustration today, because today it talks about uh, the importance of what we proclaim as well as what we practice. And, and it highlights how God requires, recognize, and recognizes and rewards our works. Can I go deeper tonight? Hallelujah. As we compare in, in this chapter, in Luke chapter 16, verse uh, 19 through 31, uh, we see a comparison and contrast and contrasting between the reward of the righteous and the reward of the wicked. Uh, a reward, uh, comparing and contrasting between the reward of the righteous as well as the reward of the wicked. Some of you are familiar with the text today where it's talking about how a rich man who lived a self-indulgent life, uh, who looked after nobody but himself and evidently did not proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. He lived exclusively for himself and he compares this rich man to a poor man, a, a mighty man of faith who did not have much in the earthly realm. But as we can understand that uh, we may not have much in the earthly realm, but the day will come because of our faith, because of our proclam proclamation, as well as our practice, that God will uh, reward every man according to his works shall be. Hallelujah. And as we go th through the text today, uh, we're looking at uh, a comparison and a contrast between the, the rich man and the poor man's days on earth as well as his disposition for eternity. We're looking at his days on earth, comparing their days on earth as well as their disposition for eternity. Hallelujah. And I want to let you know today, again, that um, uh, it's important to know that God is going to pay everybody according to their works. It's important to know that after we've served, after we sacrifice, after we have sown in this lifetime, that the God that we serve, he does not forget that, that he rewards it. Hallelujah. And he's going to pay every man according to his works. Hallelujah. Uh, and when this life is over, and I must confess uh, I am a preacher that has historically leaned towards uh, uh, talking about the benefit and the blessing of serving the Lord uh, faithfully on this side of eternity. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures, is I, I quote David often where he says, I would have fainted had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But can I just help somebody today? Hallelujah. Because I do believe, because I've seen it firsthand, that God does uh, reward you on this side of eternity. But, but I want to say today, there's nothing that you can receive on this side of eternity that can compare to what God has in store for us on the other side of eternity. And if we're, uh, even if we don't get everything that our hearts desires, hey amen, if everything that we have on the altar does not come off, I want to let you know that this is not the end. What God has in store for us on the other side of eternity, nothing can compare. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for those who will believe. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, there's nothing that can compare uh, uh, to uh, the other side of heaven uh, uh, in comparison to what we have on this side of eternity. Amen. My Bible tells me what profit a man uh, to gain the world 
and to lose his soul. So regardless of what we get on this side, hallelujah, there is no comparison what God has in store for us on the other side. So as we travel through the text in this 16th chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke, again, we want to compare and contrast uh, uh, the reward the eternal reward uh, that God has in heaven. Yes, Lord, the reward of heaven, uh, the reward for eternity for the believer as well as the non-believer. And he's looking at not only what we procl proclaim, but also what we practice. Can we go deeper today? Hallelujah. Because I want to compare and contrast, first of all, uh, these two people in the text. I want to talk about the pro prosperous man as well as the poor man. Uh, the prosperous man as well as as the poor man. Hallelujah. First, let's look at the proper, prosperous man, because the Bible tells me in Luke chapter 16, verse number 19, that there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, linen and fared sumptuously every day. Amen. A rich man clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Uh, it, if the Bible says you're rich, guess what? You might be rich. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. He was a rich man. The Bible talks about his wealth, his wardrobe, as well as his wants. Amen. He said he was rich. Uh, this man had a considerable amount of wealth. Hallelujah. He had money. Uh, money was no problem for this man. He was rich. Uh, but not only was he rich, uh, uh, he had a wardrobe. The Bible said he was clothed in purple and fine linen. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, purple, uh, as you understand in biblical terms, or uh, represents royalty. Hallelujah. And clothes in biblical times were hard to come by. Clothes were very hard to come by. Yes, Lord. So if you had clothes and if you had purple clothes, that means you had a fantastic wardrobe. But does anybody know that God does not look at the outward appearance as, as man does? Man looks at the outward appearance, but David told us that God checks the heart. Hallelujah. So not only his wealth and his wardrobe, but talking about his wants, because the Bible says that he fared sumptuously every day. Uh, uh, this means that this man had everything that he wanted at his disposal. Uh, he was making merriment and splendor every day. Uh, 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 but a lot of times when you have uh, great prosperity, hallelujah, a lot of times uh, you spend your prosperity on things that were not noble. That was the case in this man's situation, hallelujah, because he didn't see, he didn't use his, his wealth uh, to see how he could bless others. Hallelujah. His wealth was used on blessing me, myself, and I. In other words, that was his common practice. That's what he focused on continually. Continuously, uh, His wants were only wine, women, and good times. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the Bible compares and contrasts him to a poor man. Hallelujah. The Bible says in verse number 20, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Yes, a certain beggar named Lazarus. It talks about uh, the poor man, talks about the poor man's poverty. Uh, it called him a beggar. Uh, that was what he was known for. That was his occupation. That was the way that he uh, received the things that he needed to, to live on this side of eternity. He was a beggar, uh, which means that he was poor. And I want to just throw this in for free. Sometimes that we can be poor in coins. Hallelujah. We can be poor in substance, but that does not necessarily mean we're poor in spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So he was a poor man. Talked about his poverty, but it also talked about his position. It said that they laid him at the rich man's gate. Check this. Every day. Yes, Lord, this is his position. He was put in a place where he was in close connection with this prosperous rich man. Uh, he was laid at the gate daily. Yes, Lord, he was put there that he might receive some charity. He was put there that he might receive some kindness. As a matter of fact, not only his poverty and his position, hallelujah, but he talks about his plight uh, because this man was full of sores. Verse 20, yes, Lord, he was in a very grievous state physically. He was full of sores, the poor man was. And, and the Bible goes on to say about his plight that, that he desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Hallelujah. You know he was in a poor situation because he didn't have, he didn't want everything that the rich man had. His, his desire, his passion, what he wanted was just to be fed of the crumbs that fell 
from the rich man's table. Yes, Lord. But although he had a terrible, although he was uh, engrossed in poverty, although his position was not um, what we desire, and although his plight was ugly, I want to let you know that some of us are familiar with crummy situations. Amen. Uh, we can all be familiar with crummy situations, but I want to let you know today that if you have God on your side, yes, Lord, that, that God will even bless your crumbs. Uh, he can let you be thankful for your crummy situation. Amen. I don't know about you, but there have been times when uh, because of the God in my life, yes, I thank God for a crummy job. Yes, Lord. I thank God for a crummy uh, income. Hallelujah. Because the God I serve, he can take little and he can make much. Yes. I thank God that he has a, the ability to work with crumbs. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And although this man was poor and although his position and although his plight was not attractive uh, on this side of eternity, the Bible says that even in eternity, yes, Lord, that that he will feast while this rich man was starve. Hallelujah. In eternity, although that he experienced illness on this side, in eternity, yes, Lord, he'll be over there where the leaves of the tree of life are good for the healing of the nation. So as we look at this text tonight, it talks about, it compares and contrasts the reward of the righteous as well as the reward of the wicked in comparing and, and what Jesus is showing here, the comparison between the prosperous man and the poor man. It begins with their days on earth. But not only does it talk about their days on earth, I want to talk about their death while on earth. Amen. I want to talk about their death because the Bible says uh, in verse number 22 that both men eventually died. Yes, Lord, that both men both died. And, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried into the angels of Abraham's bosom. And the rich man died also and was buried. Hallelujah. Can I say this, that death does not discriminate. Hallelujah. Death is coming to each and everything that liveth. Ever since the Adam sinned in the garden, death has been the destiny of everything that lives. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Death has been the destiny of everything that lives. Uh, everything that lives. Hallelujah. Unless we're alive until Jesus come back, we'll experience this thing called death. And this scripture right here used to scare me to death. Hallelujah. When I used to hear my pastor uh, from my home church uh, say it every Sunday, he said this on uh, Romans 14 and 10 that we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yes, Lord. Uh, the, the poor as well as the prosperous must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. He would go on to quote Matthew 12 and 36. He said, but I say unto you that every idle word mm, that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof on the day of of judgment. Amen. Amen. The poor and the prosperous. Hallelujah. If death does not discriminate as it relates to the fact that we should all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and the fact that we all were given account for every deed, uh, for everything that we've said in this body. Hallelujah. It goes on to say in Matthew 16 and 27, for the son of man shall come in his glory and his father with his angels and then shall he reward every man. There it is. According to his works. So when Jesus shows up again, it talks about the fact that, you know what, uh, when he shows up with the Father and his angels, that he shall reward every man, here it is, according to his works. So it's not only what we proclaim, uh, but our reward, the, our heavenly reward is based on what we practice. And again, it, here it is again in Romans 22 and 12, it says, and behold, I come quickly. Uh, uh And my reward is with me to give to every man according, here it is, as his works shall be. Yes, Lord, Jesus has promised that he's going to reward us based on our works. Uh, and let me just make this plain tonight. Uh, on, on this Sunday, because I believe this, that that uh, I, I want to make sure you understand that we can't work our way into heaven. Amen. We we gain our interest into heaven by our ABCs, what we accept, believe and uh, Confess, yes, Lord, our proclamation gets us into the heaven. Hallelujah. But our practices determine our reward in heaven. Amen. It determines what God is going to give to each and every one of us once, not only on this side, but also on the other side of eternity. And as we look at these two men, hallelujah, in verse number 22, it talks about their death. It talked about it. It says, and it came to pass that the beggar died. And was carried into the and it was carried into the angels, and was carried by the angels. Excuse me, into the Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried. Yes, it talks about their deaths. 
uh, compares and contrasts their deaths. Yes, Lord. Uh, in biblical times, if you didn't have, uh, if you were poor, uh, uh, the way that you would even put away uh, your death uh, was different from somebody who was rich. Uh, in, in death, uh, because of his poverty, uh, he experienced trashing as well as transporting. Uh, trashing, yes, Lord. Uh, uh, the scripture does not talk about the burial of Lazarus because he was living in extreme poverty. And when you died and you lived in extreme poverty uh, in biblical times, uh, your body was thrown in the dung hill and burned. Uh, in other words, you didn't even have a decent burial. Uh, this poor man who, who had a crummy situation where uh, diseases and, and uh, the Bible talks about how he even let the dogs lick him uh, for medicinal purposes to help him in his situation. Now at death, uh, uh, he was thrown in the trash. He was trash. Yes, Lord. He was he was put in the city's dung hill for his body to be burned. But I want to let you know tonight, although his body was trash. Yes, Lord. I want to let you know that his soul was transported. Yes. Uh, the Bible says that his soul was carried away and, uh, by the angels into Abraham's bosoms. Yeah. A Lazarus life may have uh, on this side may have been trashed by the world, but his soul received a glorious attention by the angels. Hallelujah. As he was carried into Abraham's bosom. Yes, Lord. In other words, your soul is much more important than your body. As a matter of fact, Paul put it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 1. He said, for we know that if this earthly house, yeah, or, or this tabernacle shall dissolve, uh, we got another building. Yes, that's if your proclamation and, and your practice is right. Yes, Lord, we got another building. Uh, uh, that's not made by man's hands, that is eternal in the heavens. Yeah, your soul is much more important than your body. Uh, your soul is much more important than your body. Yes, Lord. Uh, the passing, uh, the death of the poor man. Well, let's talk about the passing and the death of this prosperous man. Because the Bible says in verse number 22 that the rich man, he also died. And he was buried. Hallelujah. Uh, believe it or not, your money will not prevent you from dying. <laughs> uh, I don't care how much money you have. Hallelujah. When the day comes, when the son of man comes. Yes, Lord. And he said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. When God says that your time on this side of eternity is up, it doesn't matter how much money you owe, you, you own. It doesn't matter how many connections you have. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, none of those things are important. Hallelujah. Your cash, your cribs, your clothes, your clout, uh, or your connection. Hallelujah. When Christ comes, hallelujah, death does not discriminate against anybody. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, it says it, it, it was appointed for and once to die. Uh, Hebrews 9 and 27 in your Bible. Yes, Lord. But after the death, is the judgment. Hallelujah. And, and as we look at this rich man's death, hallelujah, he had uh, uh, his death was totally different uh, from the poor man. As a matter of fact, uh, as I use my sanctified imagination, I, I can imagine his funeral was totally different. Uh, he wasn't just carried out in the back of the city for his bones and body to be burned. Yes, Lord. Uh, but but he had uh, a situation where he had a fancy tomb and there were lots of tears. Amen. Amen. He had a tomb. Yes, Lord. The rich man uh, purchased, probably purchased the most honorable place to be buried. Yes, Lord. Uh, 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 he was positioned in a great cemetery with a great tombstone. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And and uh, uh, and it doesn't matter how big your tombstone is. It doesn't matter how how, uh, how beautiful your grave is. What, most, what matters most is the condition of your soul. That's what really matters. And even uh, uh, not only did he have a, a fancy tomb, but I'm but I'm sure he had a lot of tears at his funeral. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, I'm sure that dignitaries, pastors and preachers and, and, and people of a great position came from near and far. To celebrate his life. Yes, Lord. Dignitaries. Yeah, they showed up, you know, because uh, a big funeral will cause some folk to show up. Uh, they'll take a day off from work just to come and celebrate somebody who has positions, power uh, and, 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 and possessions. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But it's not the splendor of your funeral that determines the splendor, splendor of your eternal uh, destination. Amen. Because believe it or not, many of us have seen many folks who have passed, uh, especially during this year of 2020. 
Uh, uh, as we look at some of the, the funerals, uh, even the L.A. funerals, hallelujah, of how uh, 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 different people would come from near and far. I, I'm looking back on the funeral of Michael Jackson. Lord knows I'm a Michael Jackson fan. Hallelujah. And how people came and packed the Staples Center to celebrate the king of pop. Yes, Lord. Uh, I, I'm looking back over at Kobe's uh, funeral. And Lord knows I'm a lifelong Laker fan. Yes, Lord. And how people came. Uh, Magic Johnson. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, so many others came to celebrate the life of Kobe. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, and I want to let you know today that many people may come and celebrate you. Hallelujah. And I, and I love Kobe and I love Michael Jackson. Hallelujah. But I'm wondering today, does anybody not just celebrate the king of pop, but I'm wondering you come to celebrate the king of kings. Yeah, because that's what's really important as it relates to how you will spend eternity. Hallelujah. So the prosperous man and the poor man. Yes, Lord. It talks about how they were celebrated. The, 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 their days on earth as well as their death on earth. Uh, but I'm going to close today. I want to talk about their disposition for eternity. Amen. Not only their days on earth, but I want to talk about their disposition for eternity. Because believe it or not, this is where it really comes into play. Uh, as Jesus is painting this picture of these two people uh, and how uh, it's important to uh, the, the importance of a heavenly reward, uh, a heavenly reward. Yes, Lord, uh, because he's looking now not only at what they proclaimed, uh, but also what they practice, because believe it or not, those are the things that are going to determine your, dispos your disposition for eternity. Hallelujah. It talks about it here. It says, you know what? Uh, he compares and contrasts the places that they end up. Hallelujah. The Bible says that in verse number 23, that the, the rich man, uh, his disposition was in hell. Uh, and then it goes on to say in verse 22 that the rich, that the poor man, his, uh, his disposition was in heaven. Yes. Uh, and the Bible says in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, he lifted up his eyes and he had a desire. Yes, Lord. He had a desire. Yes, Lord. Because he was there in a place of torment. Hallelujah. Whereas the poor man was in the place of tranquility. Uh, the, the rich man was in a place of drought, a place of desire, a place of, of, of where he was continuously uh, uh, in need. Hallelujah. Uh, but the but the rich man, not he wasn't in a uh, torment. He was in a place of tranquility. Yes, Lord. Talking about your the ultimate destination. Yes, Lord. Det your, uh, uh, your disposition, your, your, the place where he ends up. Believe it or not, money did not determine the place where these two souls went. It was the faith of these men. Hallelujah. This poor man, uh, the Bible lets us know that somewhere along the way, he put his trust in the Lord. And although he didn't have much on this side of eternity, hallelujah, the Bible says that now he has been transported to a place of tranquility. Yes, Lord, he's been transplanted, transported to a place of comfort, a place of peace. Yes, Lord, hallelujah, a place over there, as Revelation tells us, where, uh, where Job says, where the wicked shall cease from troubling. Over there where the weary shall be at rest. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to my heavenly reward. Yes, Lord, the poor man, he had a situation where he was confronted and confounded with disease and des where he desired where even the dogs would lick his wounds. Hallelujah. But but the Bible says that now that he's been transported. Yeah, he's in a place where he doesn't have to worry about any of that anymore. Hallelujah. He's over there in eter he's spending eternity in, in, in heaven over there with Jesus. With Jesus and the angels. Hallelujah. And he's receiving his heavenly reward. But the poor man, I mean, the prosperous man, hallelujah, his eternity was different. Yes, his disposition for eternity was completely different. As a matter of fact, death snatched the rich man from the comfort and pleasures of uh, from the material goods and wealth of this life. Hallelujah. And placed him immediately in hell in a place of misery and torment. My Bible tells me in Matthew 25 and 46, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Revelation 14, 11 tells us that the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they shall have no rest day or night. And I just believe some people believe that, you know what, they don't want to go to heaven because all of their friends have gone to hell. Well, I tell you what, there's not going to be any partying in hell. Uh, uh, there's not going to be any rejoicing in hell. There's not going to be any celebrations in hell. As a matter of fact, our Bible tells us it's a place of everlasting 
punishment, uh, 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 everlasting punishment. Yes, Lord, that's the disposition for eternity. Uh, that's the reward for eternity. But I'm glad today that there is another destination. Amen. I'm glad that Jesus has given us another way for it to have a different disposition. As a matter of fact, my Bible tells me that Jesus came down through 40 in two generations. Yes, Lord. Said that he was born of a virgin. Yes. Uh, said that he was laid in a major. The Bible tells me that he lived a sinless life. The Bible tells me that he gave sight to the blind, uh, that he healed the sick. Hallelujah. The Bible tells me that uh, that he was uh uh, he, after that, he hung, bled, and died. It was placed in a cross, uh, uh, placed on a cross to hang, bleed, and die. And then he was buried in Joseph's new tomb. That early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand and declared, I have the key to death and hell. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And I'm glad today, I'm glad today that Jesus has died for us. I'm glad today that because of this, that Jesus has given us a different disposition, that we have a different place that we will spend eternity. But again, I want to let you know today that it's important not only what we proclaim, but also what we practice. God said that he's going to reward every man according to his works shall be. God requires, he recognizes, and he rewards not only our proclamation, but also our practice. And it doesn't matter how much money we've had during this lifetime. What profit a man to gain the world and to lose his soul? The question to consider is, do we know Jesus as our Savior today? Because if we do, there is a reward that Christ has promised us. He promised that even if we give a drink of water to the least of his little ones, we would no wise lose our reward. And I just want to encourage somebody who's been working day and night that has been serving in season and out of season. Somebody who's been serving behind the scenes as well as uh, in front of the scenes. The God I serve, he sees it. He requires it. He recognizes it. And he also rewards it. There is a place over there where the wicked shall cease from trouble. There is a place where the weary shall be at rest. There is a place where we shall receive a reward. For every deed and for every idle thought that we've done in the body. And I'm glad today that Paul says at the end of his destination, he said, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith and I finished my course. And now there is a crown of righteousness that's laid up for me. But not only for me, but to all of those that love his appearing. And the question to consider is, what about when God appears to you? Ah. Uh, Will you be like the, the man that was prosperous on this side? Or you, will you be like the man that was poor on this side, but was rich in heaven? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the things that he's given on this side. I've, been, I've seen God uh, do great things. I've witnessed firsthand the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. But even in the midst of all of that, hallelujah. In the midst of all of that, there's nothing on this side of eternity that can compare to what God has in store for me. Yes, the rich man may, the poor man may have had diseases, been licked by dogs, destined to have a crummy situation. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that he's going over there. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Where there should be no more tears, uh, no more death, no more disease. Uh, he's going to receive a reward for his labor. And the question to consider is, what about you? Uh, have you made your proclamation? Have you decreed, dec decreed and declared that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Hallelujah. Well, that's the great first step. Hallelujah. That's the first step. And that's the essential step right there. Because again, that gives us our interest to heaven. Hallelujah. But there is a place for works, for your service, for your commitment. That's the evidence that you have received Christ uh, on this side of eternity. So let us do like Jesus. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Because night cometh and no man can work. Hallelujah. I'm going to work on, toil on, pray on, until I reach that beautiful city where Jesus is alive. And I just believe by faith that just like Paul, that I'm going to wear a crown. I'm going to wear a crown. I'm going to see his face. 
Hallelujah. I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story of how I made it over. And that's my heart's desire for you too, my brothers and my sisters. The question to consider is, have you received him today? And if you haven't, you have this opportunity while the blood is still running warm in your body. He said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me and I will pay every man according to his works. He's shown up time after time in 2020 that he's coming quickly. He's coming quickly. Yes, Lord. And death is coming to us all, not only the prosperous and the poor, hallelujah, but the black, the white. Yes, Lord, the Republican and the Democrat and the saved as well as the unsaved. And I don't know about you, but I want to see his face in peace. And if you haven't, hallelujah, you can do that today. You can receive him. Hallelujah. You can say, I believe, accept, believe, and confess. I accept the fact that I'm born a sinner. I believe that Jesus is the son of God that died for my sins. And I make that confession with my heart, with my mouth. And as a consequence, yes, Lord, because you died for me, I'm going to live for you. I'm not only going to proclaim it, but I'm also going to practice it. The word of God for the people of God and the people of God did say, amen. May God bless you. May he forever keep you is our prayer. Amen. Yeah. I shall wear a crown. Yes, Lord. I shall wear I shall see his face. I shall see his face. When it's all over, oh yes, I will. When it's all over, hey, I'm going. I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. Soon as I get home, I'll be glad to see Jesus face to face, whether it be no crying no more dying oh soon as oh I, I get home won't you be glad to see Jesus won't you be glad to see the Savior oh soon as soon as I